All right, so it's time for another eBay unboxing. What did we get this time? And you know, I'm actually, I'm going to be quite honest, I'm actually afraid to show you guys um, some of the things that I find because I'm afraid that a lot of you will start collecting it too, and then it'll raise the price for me. And yes, I'm a bit greedy and uh, a little bit of an asshole. Sorry. So what I have noticed actually is not that I have like this huge reach, you know, like where I have like a million subscribers, but I do notice when I make videos showing you some of the treasures I find that um, all of a sudden I'm noticing a lot more people are bidding on the items that I look for and hunt for. And sorry about that. My dogs are going to be an asshole right now. And uh, hold on a minute. Shut up. They're not going to listen. And uh, I'm going to have to cut the video short a second. I'll be back. So, like I was saying, when I was so rudely interrupted, I just threw the dogs in the yard. Whenever the mailman's about, they bark. So, I was saying, I notice that all of a sudden, it starts to get more expensive for me. And I'm noticing that, like, when I do certain videos, all of a sudden, uh, a bunch of people are buying the stuff. Because I'm telling you, well, this thing is worth this, and that is worth this, and this is rare. And so, people are starting to hunt for themselves. And I'm a little bit of a... Uh, I'm not very competitive, to be quite honest with you, normally. I'm not a competitive person, never got into competitive sports. But it, when, when it comes to antiques, I'm highly competitive. And so I'm getting a little nervous about continuing to make these videos, giving out free information on how to find these things and uh, the values. And, you know, I don't get any compensation for any of these videos. Nobody pays me. I don't get any um Ad, uh, ad revenue from my videos because I'm not monetized. And a lot of people actually do come to me privately and ask me, what is my item worth? They send me pictures. And I've been graciously actually giving them, you know, values. I'm not Dr. Lori. I'm not an expert, but I've actually been pretty much spot on with my uh, estimates. And uh, I had, for example, a guy asked me about an item. I'm not going to tell you who it is because he may be still watching this video. And I told him what his item was worth and who made it and when it was made. And I collect that particular item. He got it at a thrift store for like five bucks. And I noticed he sold it for, I told him it was worth like a thousand dollars. And I found it on eBay. And I found uh, that he sold it for a buy it now of I think like $895. I didn't even get a thank you. So what I'm trying to say is these videos actually don't serve me. So I'm not asking for a pat on the back or a thank you, but... I'm getting a little nervous that I'm creating competition for myself and uh, I don't get anything from it, but I enjoy going over the history anyway. So I saw this item. It was listed as a perfume bottle, but I took a look at it and I studied the pictures, which weren't very wonderful. And I got this, by the way, for $25, which was a steal. And uh, I realized it was a snuff bottle. And snuff bottles, actually certain ones, uh, can go for big bucks, are highly collectible, and uh, there's a lot of, like, competition for winning these sort of things. Now, uh, the person, again, listed this as a perfume bottle. I don't know why nobody wanted it. Wow, it's much bigger than I thought and much better. Um, but what we have here is a snuff bottle. Now, this is a very, very old snuff bottle. And look at this ruby red glass, almost like a cranberry in color. Look how it shines, almost like a gemstone. If you look on this side here, and look at the swirls in the glass. This is all hand-blown, and you can see, uh, wow, I mean, look at this. This was, uh, uh, actually, the ponsel was grounded out since this was hand-blown. You can see that right there. And if you look, I mean, as the light goes through it, look at this workmanship. Now, you don't see this every day. It almost looks actually like a gem. It's even faceted in certain areas. You can see the facets. This was all done hand cut on a wheel. And uh, I did my research. And now I'm no expert. I'm no PhD. I'm no Dr. Lori. Um, I found out that these bottles were made from around 1820 to about 1850s. And uh, it's really old. So we have on top here, if you look close, we have these little rings, has a special stopper in it. Don't know if you can see that, and it's uh, really quite lovely. Now, nine times out of ten with these snuff bottles, the original stoppers have gone missing uh, or they have uh, actually broken, and they're not with the bottle. Now, if you look here, we have this enamel work, this beautiful hand-painted raised enamel work. 
and on the back we have a message and I can't figure out the messes. So if you are, okay, here's where I found out it was made. At first I thought it was Bohemian or Czechoslovakian, but I found out they're actually one in the same pretty much. Now I'm no historian, but Bohemia is an area that we know now as the Czech Republic from the middle ages to about, I think it was 1918, Bohemia was called Bohemia. Now it's in an area where we know today as Bavaria and it's a made up of gypsies, believe it or not. Now, the people that made up Bohemia, they claim, were mostly like French gypsies. and uh, But it's also a quite Germanic and Slavic also at the same time. So uh, the Bohemians, otherwise known as the Czechoslovakians, were master blast glowers. Uh, uh, glowers? I mean, blowers. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to be like flubbing this one up. But uh, for the most part, Czechoslovakians were known for their glass. Companies such as Eggerman, I believe, I'm probably going to get that wrong. Also Moser, Haida. Um, there's uh, other ones by the name of Harak. Don't know if I got that right. Uh, Bruder Rockman. All sorts of uh, companies were known to make this gorgeous, gorgeous enameled glass with uh, beautiful designs going through the glass in different colors, not just clear, but we got colors as well. Also clear to cut which would mean you'd see different colors cut into it. Um, and this says, Schnuff Brada Haidis A Ga or Gula Gula. Now, I tried to do Google, of course, Google Translate, and I am not um, smart when it comes to this language, but it looks very middle age type of, a middle age type of font, Germanic font. And uh, that was a revival right around the Regency era, Georgian era. They uh, started to print things on bottles um, in a Germanic Middle Age font. And so what I was only able to get from Google Translate was that this was, I think, German language. And I think schnuff means to sniff or snuff. Bruder means brother. And I can't, it would not translate this, 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 and this. So if you can tell me what that means in English, I'd greatly appreciate it. So basically, it's a snuff bottle. And they would have like catchy little uh, words on there, like hide your wife, hide your kids in German. No, I'm only kidding. But it would be like sort of comical. And they would have uh, common day sentiments and uh, words uh, actually printed on bottles and vases and glasses and all sorts of glass objects. Now, I found out that apparently this is considered Bavarian, but also in a way you can consider it Czechoslovakian or Bohemian. Now, let's take out the stopper and try not to break the damn thing because apparently this is very, very old. And if you look at the stopper, let's put this down, it's really quite unique. You've got some kind of like material wrapped around here to make like a little cork. And then if you look at this, it's almost like tweezers. So let's see if it works like tweezers, and it does. So basically, you would put your snuff, which you would sniff up your nose, which was a dried flavored tobacco. And so I guess somebody would, I'm trying to do this. Like, go like that to get the snuff forward. It was, like, dried into a powder. And then pull it out with these tweezers and hold on to it and stick it up their nose and huff it. So that is actually cool. The fact someone thought this was a scent bottle. Now, they made a lot of scent bottles that actually looked like this is cool. So let's do our research. Let's find out more history about this. This is absolutely an amazing, amazing buy for me. Now, I do notice that they don't really uh, – there's not too many of these being sold in the U.S., this is more of a European thing. Now, for one thing, the value is different as opposed to America to Europe. So this item in America might be worth $350 to $500. But in Europe, something like this is more commonly found all over the place. And uh, so the market is saturated there. So in Europe, a European person might only spend $100 to $150 for this item. And so re um, regionally... The values are different. So you can put an American value estimate on this item that is completely polar opposite of, say, a European estimate. Now, here's an example of another one of these type of bottles. Now, this one is just a decanter, and it has a hand-painted enameled horse on it. And I'm trying to show you. And on another side, it has words. And so you see these uh, type of Germanic words. 
And what that actually says is, which is quite cool, because this, this one is dated 1850s. It actually sold, there's no price on it, unfortunately. It looks like it's missing its stopper. But it says, um, presenting a charming hand-painted work from the Biedermeier era, which is, I think, around the 18... 40s, 1850s. The decor of this piece is a snapshot of the artistic style influences during this period of history. Biedermeier themes rein, uh, reinforce the feelings of security. And I can't even say that word, gem ut kite. The idea of a state of feel or feeling of warm friendliness, good cheer, peace of mind, and a sense of belonging, simplicity, and avoidance of political and social commentary. Okay, so it says the text is written in the current script. It's called current, an old form of German language, handwriting based on late medieval cursive writing, also known as current schrift, Deutsch schrift, and German cursive. And if you hear crunching, my dogs are eating their chow right now while I do a video. And uh, basically, what did that say? What did that word say um, on there? It said, and I'm trying to find it, I am blind. Oh, here you go. Um, it translates, don't lend anyone your horse, your woman, or your gun, which is quite comical. All right, let's check out some other of these type of pieces that you can find on the internet. Now, of course, it's on WorthPoint, and WorthPoint wants you to pay, start free trial, and then you have to give them your uh, actual credit card, and I'm not doing that. So we don't know what this one sold for. But here's a, another one of these snuff bottles, and actually you can see like how the... Uh, pink salmon color with the cut glass to clear. We got the rings on the top. And this is, a, again, another very old bottle. And now these ones are uh, called Bavarian snuff bottles. And you can see the swirls in the glass. Uh, this one missing the stopper. This one also missing the stopper. And it's a starting bid Euro 240 for two of them. I don't know what it sold for because apparently the website does not give you the prices of their auction lots. Sadly. Now, I found a website called, uh, of course, they're not going to like, they're going to have these stupid stamps everywhere so you can't copy, you know, the picture from them. But this says here, snuff flasks, uh, snuff flasks at a glass museum in Frauenau, Bavarian Forest, Lower Bavaria, Bavaria, Germany. And you can see, look at uh, how similar the bottles are to mine with, again, with the two rings in the top, which is uh, really quite neat. And yet, here are more designs that you will find. And I do know that the Germans, actually Germans, uh, made perfume bottles, swirl perfume bottles as well that you could still find. And those were generally made from about 1900 to the 1920s. But uh, this design, this swirl design, actually went um, actually earlier from like the 18, early 1800s and on. And so it's hard to date these bottles. And so here's uh, such a bottle that's called Latticino or Zanfarico glass snuff bottle being sold in the Great Britain uh, area for actually 175 Great Britain pounds, which is in Canadian 267.05, which in the U.S. would probably be about maybe 190, something like that, maybe 200. And unfortunately, I can't speak German, but somebody came up with a book that costs, uh, wow, 79 euros. Um, actually, that's being sold on Amazon that actually shows you these bottles and they're called Bavarian bottles or Bavarian snuff bottles. And let's try to get a close up to show you the many different designs you'll find. No two are alike. Basically, they are like snowflakes and they are absolutely gorgeous. Now, I wanted to show you the um, actual uh, Bohemian or Czechoslovakian glass pieces that are very, very similar to... Our snuff bottle in style. Um, so again, I'm really thinking that um, the Bavarians and the Bohemians were one and the same. So let's go into uh, this company. All right. So this is uh, actually, uh, I think it's a uh, Fritz. Was it Fritz Hecker? And this is Bohemian. And you get a lot of these really beautiful, beautiful Bohemian hand blown glass with enamel work on it. A lot of them had enamel work writing on them on these goblets and pictures um really quite lovely and you can see they are not cheap um just for one glass it's like 175 us dollars uh maybe even more because euros are more than american but uh you can see the different beauty um between these type of pieces 
Now here's more Checo. Uh, Checo is Slovakian or Bohemian glass with enamel work. Um, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. This is by Haida, the manufacturer Haida. And you'll get a lot of really different, like almost uh, Venetian style glass. Uh, very, very interesting. In different colors, ruby. We have this gold or yellow, blue. Um, some with designs and paintings on them. Some with words. Now again, this one is a very, very old one, Biedemeyer era. I think that was the 1840s, 1850s, being sold for $249. This is a perfume flacon. Flacon? Flacon? I can never say that word right. But you can see there's words on it. And these were generally souvenir pieces. So someone would travel the area and bring one of these pieces back with them, which is quite cool. Now again, like I told you, in Europe, these things sell for way less than in America. For example, this one is called Bohemian Glass Snuff Bottle and Stopper, circa 1825. And we got those rings um, on the top a lot like my bottle. And it won't focus, but here we go. Here's the type of glass. Let's uh, take a look and investigate. So I'm trying to get an age on my bottle. It's the same exact shape. This one dated 1825. Really interesting. We got the rings on the top, just like mine. And uh, the neck is uh, almost identical. But again, a different pattern. And the bottom is grounded out. So you got that grounded out pontal, which is quite cool. And let's check out, there was another one. I have to try to find it. That, uh, yeah, this guy sold uh, another one uh, similar to this for the same price. And here we go, dated 1825. And uh, he sold it for 85 euros, which is quite sad. In America, something like this is not readily found, not easily found. Let's take a look at it. Look at that very Venetian looking almost. And those swirls in the glass. We got those rings on the top, dated 1825. So how old is my bottle really? So without me being an expert, um, the truth is, is these bottles were made also not only do, during the early um, 1800s and the mid 1800s, they were also made all the way through the early 20th century. So it's very hard to pin down a date, although I would like to say that mine was made at least uh, in the 1850s, um, possibly up to the 1870s. I don't think it is any later than that. This is a really older type of version. So I'm going to guess 1850s to 1870s. Uh, $25 is a steal, and I did really well. Now, I hope you guys don't start collecting these because then I'm going to have competition. I don't like having competition, but hey, I can't stop you guys. But I do notice every time I put up a video about things, and I'm not telling you you can't buy shit, right? <laughs> go ahead, go out and buy it. You might say I'm being an arrogant prick right now, but I can't stand it. I'm noticing the prices of things are going up, and uh, people are actually uh, using my strategies of bidding and sniping and winning these items and I don't know if I'm going to be doing these videos anymore because I don't need any more competition because I don't have a, a big pocketbook and can't really afford these things um, like most of you can because you have a better budget than me but uh, please don't start hunting these bottles um, actually um, I like them and I don't want to uh, act, have to duke it out with you as a matter of fact somebody said the other day I did a video and I must have got an, a new subscriber and I was doing videos about about cameos and she said oh I was bidding on the same cameo as you and I, I sort of like uh I cringed inside because I felt sort of bad because I sort of beat that person and took something she wanted away and it made me feel like lousy um but then uh I guess it's he who wins, wins. And uh, and if she won it, good for her. And, uh, you know, congratulations. And uh, But I don't want to create any kind of uh, interest in these things because although it would raise the value of the ones in my collection, I don't like to duke it out with people. And I certainly do not like to uh, actually get my treasures stolen out from underneath me. So I don't think I'm going to do any more bidding strategy videos to give you guys any hints or any videos of showing you how I find these treasures or, or these sleepers that aren't listed correctly because I don't want any competition. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys all soon. And uh, yeah, this is really a great buy.